What's going on guys? How's everybody doing this evening? Today is May 11th, Thursday, and I'm in Midland, Texas. Picking up a load tomorrow morning and taking it home, which is going to be Houston, to drop off on Monday morning. Okay, But I hope everybody's doing well. And man, the last video I did, um, I was talking about Uber and Lyft. How I um, basically tested the water, so to speak, you know. Um, and I received a couple of people asking me, if I can share more information, okay? Now, right now, guys, honestly, I may not be the best person to give you full, full information, but I, all I can do is just share, so far, what I've seen and what I've, I've experienced, okay? And cover up some uh, some uh, some ad advice or, or tips, you know, that I've, that I've seen so far, okay? Now, like I said, you know, I, I downloaded both apps a couple of weeks ago, right? Almost going on a month now, okay? Um, I have Uber and Lyft. I've only done 13 hours. I was looking at my numbers yesterday. I've only done 13 hours the first week, okay? And I did 16 hours the second week uh, online. And all hours I've done have been solely just on Uber, okay? Now understand, guys. I have my own vehicle, okay? I have a 2017 GMC Yukon. So that entitles me to be under the Uber X, which is basically the bottom platform, and Uber XL. Okay, I didn't pick that. Once you put your information in the system on Uber side, it detects automatically what you qualify for, okay? Um, but, like I said, it entitles me to run under Uber X and Uber XL. All right, that's what my vehicle calls for. All the rides that I've given, guys, all the rides that I've given, okay, I would say about 98% of all my rides have been just Uber X. I've probably given maybe three rides under the XL, uh, and, and usually the customer requests that. You know, it's not something that I do, all right? So, Uber X, I know there's money to be made out there, all right? You don't need a big vehicle or whatever you want to call it. But having my own vehicle, all right, having my own vehicle entitles me to work under both apps, which is going to be Uber and Lyft. But if you were to rent a car, and remember I told you guys, Uber and Lyft have partnerships with Hertz, Avis, Hire Car, and Toro. Okay, whatever app you use to rent a car, that is the only app you can use, all right? You can't be bouncing back and forth, all right? There are some good things and bad things about using your own vehicle, all right? The good thing is, obviously, you can work off both apps. Another good thing is that, let's just say today, I worked, I made 300 bucks. If I need money, I can go ahead and cash out, okay? And their cash out process is very, very simple and very quick. They only charge you, and this is Uber, they only charge you 85 cents per transaction. The, th the times that I've done it, which were only three times, it hits my bank account probably within 10 seconds, okay? And they only charge you 85 cents per transaction, and you can do it up to four times a day. But honestly, guys, it's gonna be all or nothing, okay? If I make 300 bucks and I say I need 150, I can't pull out just 150. It's gonna be, have to be all or nothing, all right? Now on the rental side, I can't do that, okay? I can't cash out until my rental fee has been covered for that week, okay? So let's just say basically, okay, your rental agreement starts on a Monday, okay? I have to cover my rental costs today before I can start pulling out any money, okay? Let's say today I want to make 275. Today's Monday. Well, tomorrow I have to make $25. From, from what I've read, I have to make $25 tomorrow, which will be Tuesday. And then after that, I can start pulling out whatever I need. Okay. It is what it is, guys. 
the benefits on using your own vehicle, like I said, you can run under both apps. Now, be careful, okay? Because I've been told, because both apps will know off the bat if you're using your own vehicle because that's how your profile is set up, okay? But I've heard that Lyft monitors their drivers on the how often they go on and offline because they're assuming that you're cherry picking, okay? You're seeing what app is better at the moment, okay? So I hear that Lyft kind of like monitors on how busy they keep you, okay? Um, how busy they're gonna keep you. Because to them it's gonna be like, well, you know what? Screw me, no, screw you, all right? If that's true, I really don't know, guys. I really don't, I'm still new to the game. I can only share so far of what I've read and what I've seen, all right? But on the rental side, you can only work off one app, okay? You can only work on one app. Right now, my two cents on one app over the other, on the Uber side, I see a lot, a lot of advantages. A lot of advantages over Lyft, okay? And what I mean by that, guys, is when I start, okay, say I go online right now, I'll turn on both apps. I'll turn on both apps. The times that I've gone online, Uber keeps me busy. Uber keeps me busy. Not only that, guys, not only that, on the Uber side, right out the gate, even though I'm a new driver, okay, I can see basically all the information from the rider, okay? The only thing I don't see is gonna be the rider's name until I accept the ride, okay? I can see, see how much it's paying, how far I have to go to pick them up, and how far I have to take them to drop them off, okay? On the Lyft side, I don't see that, okay? All I see is how much it's paying. So I don't know if I have to go five miles to pick them up and then 10 miles to drop them off for seven bucks, okay? I really don't know. I read into it, and what it's telling me on the Lyft side is I have to build a certain status before I start getting riders information. And I think that status was I have to accept 40 rides before I get any kind of riders information, okay? I don't see myself pulling 40 rides not knowing where I'm going just to get to a certain status, okay? Now I heard also guys, <laughs> that Lyft pays more than Uber, but then Uber has the better promotions, okay? Not, not to sit there and say Lyft doesn't, but they say Uber has the better promotions, all right? They have guarantees, they have Quest, they have surges, and they have Boost, okay? Guarantees, let's talk about guarantees. Basically, it's telling you, I think that's my wife, the guarantees, they're telling you if you make this amount of, of rides, okay, within a certain period of time, okay, they're gonna guarantee you make a hundred and whatever it is, okay? 10 rides, they're gonna guarantee you 140, all right? Let's just take, for, for instance, that number, because I've seen it. 10 rides, they're gonna give you 140 bucks, or you they guarantee you you're gonna make 140 bucks. Well, let's say you make the 10 rides, but you only made 120. Well, Uber's gonna kick in the difference. They're gonna give you a hundred, they're gonna give you the 20 bucks, which will give you that 140. Okay, and the numbers are very, very doable, guys. The numbers are very, very doable. So I see a lot of those guarantees kicking you out, or, you know, or kicking at you, all right? Quest, they'll give you a Quest, all right? And I'm gonna post a Quest picture because I saw one right now, too, for this weekend. A Quest is basically a number to hit, or actually a ride number to hit, and they're gonna tack on some money above what you made, okay? So they'll say, if you make 50 rides from Friday to Monday morning, they're gonna tack on 150 bucks. So let's just say you make $500, okay, from that Friday to that Monday morning, because you were busy Friday night, you were busy Saturday night, you were busy Sunday night, okay? So let's say you make 500 bucks they're gonna give you another 150, all right? And if you tack on 10 more rides, which would be 60 rides, they're gonna tack on an extra $35, all right? 
So they're enticing you guys, all right, to stay on the platform and to work, okay? And I guess that's one way Uber and Lyft are kind of like battling each other out to have drivers stay on their platform, okay? So that's a quest. It's a number to hit within a time frame that they're gonna give you extra money, okay? Now a surge, a surge is basically a small area where they feel it's gonna be busy, like say it's, there's a ball game tonight, okay? So downtown Houston, from this time to this time, they feel it's gonna be busy, so what they're gonna do is they're gonna tack on money to your ride, okay? Those surges last anywhere from an hour to two hours to three hours, I've seen it, okay? It's as low as maybe a dollar. I've seen even high as nine dollars. So let's just say you're in that area within that time frame. You get a ride that's five bucks. Well, there's a nine dollar surge, okay? So you just made fourteen dollars on that one ride because you were in that area at that particular time. They were telling you that it was going to be hot, okay? That's a surge, and they're all over the place, okay? A boost. A boost is basically a widespread, from what I've seen, a widespread time frame that they want riders to be on their platform and they're going to tack on um, some money to your rides, okay, from what I've seen, okay. So, like I was telling you, they say Lyft pays more, but Uber has the most and better promotions, okay, and I guess that's one way Uber and Lyft are battling each other to have more drivers under their platform. Guys, like I said, I'm already starting to see some advantages off one platform over the other, okay? Now, I've been staying busy. When I go online, I've been staying busy solely on Uber, okay? But I do have my Lyft platform turned on just so I can see how the rides look, all right? But like I said, I don't know where it's going, how far I have to take this rider, how far, you know, or whatever. I don't, okay? On the Uber side, I get to see all that, and then when I accept it, I get to see the customer's name, okay? And it'll tell you, accept this ride, get this much increase, because either you're in a surge, you're in a boost area, or you're in a quest, or whatever it is back and forth, right? Okay. And it'll tell you right off the bat your potential of earnings. Okay. And then also later on, if a customer leaves you a tip, you'll get a ping saying, congratulations, customer left you a $1.75 tip or whatever you want to call it. Okay. So then you'll see that increments jump up again because you, get, you just got a tip. All right. And I saw some tips coming through. Okay. I had one guy tip me 15 bucks. And I think it was like my second ride for the night, that first time I went out. Um, he just wanted to go down the street to get a pack of cigarettes and then his ride was like two dollars and fifty cents okay i mean or no i'll take it back it was like three something right but then he gave me a fifteen dollar tip okay um but it is what it is guys now let's talk about the rental all right i gave you guys a number last week okay number of last week of three uh three hundred dollars and three hundred and thirty okay three hundred thirty let's talk about the houston market because that's where i'm at if i was to rent a car through Hertz or through Avis or through Harry Car or whatever you want to call it. I don't I don't know I don't remember which one it was. I want to say it was Avis. They gave me a flat rate of $260. That was a flat rate. And it was either a Corolla, a Sentra, an Accord, or something similar. Okay. It was $260. That covered unlimited miles and it also covered maintenance. They do the oil changes, they do the PMs. The tires start going out, they'll replace the tires. Now, if I blow out a tire or a rock hits the windshield, that's solely on me, okay? But $260 was a basic flat rate, okay? And that covered unlimited miles and covers the maintenance. The $40 that kicked in were the taxes and then administration fee, okay? Administration fee, or not administration, but the thing is, Uber and Lyft have partnerships with these rental companies, right? So they do all the paperwork already for you. You don't have to do any kind of downloading or uploading or whatever you want to call it, all right? They do everything for you, all right? What I was giving you guys was a 330 was because I was also tacking in the insurance. 
The insurance is optional, guys, okay? The driver and the rider already get insurance through the app, okay? What you're looking at is gonna be insurance for the vehicle, all right? Insurance for the vehicle, all right? Now, like I said, that is optional. You don't need to have it. You're just running the risk to where if anything happens, you're gonna have to pay the deductible, all right? But I've also been told to where don't get the insurance through the app. When you go to pick up the car, before you sign off on anything, ask them what the insurance is because I've been told to where you can get the insurance cheaper at the counter, all right? So it is what it is, guys. It is what it is, okay? One thing you have to keep in mind, guys, one thing you have to keep in mind, all right? Doing these rides here, okay, it's almost like truck driving, so to speak, okay? You're only allowed, okay, Uber and Lyft, you're only allowed to drive for 12 hours. Then you have to get offline, okay? And you have to sit offline for six hours before your time resets, okay? You can wait for six hours, go home, rest for two, get back online or whatever you want to call it, okay? Because I've been reading these ins and outs, these reviews and all this stuff back and forth, okay? But we're already used to being behind the wheel. We're already used to being in traffic, you know, the hustle and bustle, whatever you want to call it, okay? Um, but yeah, so far guys, so far, I've seen a lot of advantages of one app over the other, okay? But like I said, guys, I'm on the fence, okay, on what I wanna do because these numbers that I was hitting on just a couple of hours being online, man, and I know each market is different, I really do, guys. I really know that each market is gonna be different from my market over to your market or whatever you wanna call it, okay? But I live close to the airport, I live close to downtown. I live close to the to the medical center. Okay, um, so I do have a lot of advantages uh, than some people might will or or might have. But like I said, I'm still on the fence, guys. You know, because I really like being over the road, but I also like being home. Okay. So like I said, you know, it's still weighing on the back of my mind to decide what to do, man. But so far, my experience on doing the ride share solely on Uber, like I said, solely on Uber, has been very, very positive, guys. Very, very positive. So like I said, um, I hope this information has answered some of you guys' questions. If you guys have any other questions, please list them below. If not, call me, text me. We'll talk about it, but I'll answer as best as I can. But like I said, so far I'm learning. And what I've learned is stuff that's real quick, and to me it's very important, like writer's information, okay? Um, I like to know where I'm going, okay? Um, yeah, so with that being said, guys, be careful. Mother's Day weekend, talk to you guys later.